In our highly connected world, it's often the case that the most interesting microcontroller projects we come up with require some level of interaction with interconnected elements. As an example, a couple of my previous videos covered the use of an ESP32 controller with camera to monitor the state of the needle on a water meter using computer vision techniques. To make this truly useful, we need some way of notifying someone or something in the outside world about whether or not water is flowing and if some physical action should be taken. It would be great if the microcontroller could send us an email or other notification as a warning if something anomalous is detected. The ESP32 is perfect for this as it has built-in Wi-Fi connectivity and it's really easy to set up. Today we'll be looking at using the ESP32 to trigger some action with the outside world via IFTTT. IFTTT is a free web service that connects other services together for simple automation. IFTTT stands for if this then that. So if some service is triggered then some action is taken. It's used by many well-known developers to integrate many available services. For an example, uh, an appliance company can use IFTTT to allow their customers to schedule when their devices turn on and off. Use of IFTTT is dependent on applets, which actually define the way services are applied. There is a trigger service and there is an action service. So if there's a trigger event, then the action is taken. We can create our own applets uh, to work with our ESP32 microcontroller. We'll walk through all the main steps to set this up and implement an example uh, in this video. Before getting into that, please do take a moment to subscribe to this channel and like the video if you like this sort of content. I would really appreciate it and it gives me an idea of what sort of videos are useful to share. Now, there are two ways to use IFTTT with our ESP32. We can have our microcontroller trigger um, an event to take some action, send us a notification, for example, or we can have IFTTT trigger our ESP32 to take some action. For example, some application would trigger the ESP32 to turn a light on or something. We'll look at only the first case in this particular video. That is, we will make our ESP32 trigger an IFTTT event to take some action. Specifically, we will get the ESP32 to send us an email notification. To get started, we'll need to sign up for IFTTT on IFTTT.com. Uh, you can click on Get Started, and you can um, sign up with some existing account through Apple, Google, or Facebook, or use a separate email or, uh, to log in. In my case, I've already registered. I've used a, uh, a Google account for convenience. So sign up for an account, and then next we will need to create uh, an IFTTT applet for the ESP32. Okay, so the ESP32 will interact with the IFTTT webhooks service via an HTTP request. The webhook service will trigger whatever other services define in the applet. And of course, that trigger service will take the final action. So what you want to do is uh, log in uh, to your account and then click the uh, Create button, okay, which um, will, will create an applet which connects webhooks to the desired service email in, in this case. So the new window opens, and we want to click um, the Add button for uh, If This. And then a new page opens. And we need to choose our service. So uh, enter uh, webhooks uh, in the search bar, and, and then select the webhooks service. Now select uh, receive a web, uh, web request. OK, that's for our trigger. And remember, the ESP32 will send a web request as our trigger to send an email. Now click Connect. 
And we need to give the request some event name. For my own purposes, I want to keep things generic so I can possibly reuse the webhook for multiple projects. I'll just name it status update. Next, we'll create trigger. Press that button. After creating the trigger, we're sent back to the web page where we added the um, if this service. Now we choose the uh, then that um, service and click add. And we want to search for mail in the search box and, uh, and then select the corresponding icon. We'll use uh, internet mail to send us notification when the ESP32 controller makes the request. So uh, once the other window opens and we need to choose the action, select send me an email to receive notifications from your own email account. Okay, so we can complete the action fields um, uh, that will be sort of part of the email that is sent to you. And so there is um, a subject line and body. And so we'll just make a minor modification to the subject line. Um, and as, for, as far as the body goes, um, you know, you can see that it's going to advise you what the event name was. Uh, it's going to give you a, a curdat timestamp when the uh, event uh, happened. And there's the extra data. So value one, two, and three. So this is just extra data that can be sent, uh, let's say, from the ESP32. Um, I think I'll probably just use you know, the first one, value one. But that will you know, form part of the body of the email message that is sent to you. Now we're done with the action fields. So click Update Action. And the action is now defined. Next, we get sent back to the Edit Applet page, and we'll click Update, and we get an indication that the applet uh, is uh, updated. And now that the applet has been created, uh, and we need to get information in order to make use of it. So let's go to My Services and click on uh, Webhooks, and click on Documentation. This provides your key information. Remember, this is unique to you. Okay, so you want to copy that and, and put it somewhere. We'll, we'll need it. So let's test the applet now with a, a mock web request. So I'm just going to fill in the fields here. Um, so the, uh, a web request to a particular trigger status update and uh, a value of one in the body. And the event has been created, it's been triggered. We check our email, and sure enough, uh, it's there. OK, so we've now set up an applet that will trigger an email notification when we get an event. Next, we need to take care of the ESP32 microcontroller code. I have the Arduino IDE open with the C code here, and I'll quickly run through it. For setting up an ESP32 board for the first time in Arduino IDE, you can refer to a previous video I'll link to in the description. I'm using a different ESP32 module there, one with a camera, but it will be identical except for whatever particular board you have. I'm using a different ESP32 board myself in this case. First, we need to include some header files including Wi-Fi.h and HTTP Client.h. Then, of course, you need to set up your Wi-Fi information including Wi-Fi network name and password. Next, we declare the server name that we use to trigger the IFTTT applet event. You'll enter um, this, which includes the event name, status update in my case, and we'll also include the unique key we were given for webhooks. Now we go to the setup function, which initializes Wi-Fi on ESP32. This is standard stuff we covered in the other ESP32 video, and you'll find plenty of resources online. Next, we go to the main loop. Um, what I've done is make it so the ESP32 module waits for serial input, which will come from our typed input into the serial monitor. 
Once we get some input, we'll begin an HTTP request, including the server name, header, and then finally some data, which we will assign to the value of the serial input string. Um, this data is the value field we have defined in the applet. Okay, so then we post the fully formed HTTP request and then print the response code. That's it uh, for a quick overview of the code. Um, I'll include a link to it in the description as well. Now all that's left to do is test things out. The ESP32 board is connected to the computer running Arduino IDE via USB for serial communication. Let's open the serial monitor and try things out. Uh, let me clear the contents of the monitor first. And remember the objective is to type in something through the serial interface uh, to the ESP32 board and the board will post an HTTP request through its own Wi-Fi connection to the internet to IFTTT and trigger an event which should result in us getting an email notification. So to start, I will simply type in testing and wait for the response which we get an OK for. Now I open my email and sure enough we see the email. Um, it has the name of the event, status update, and uh, look at the body of the message, and it has testing as the data value, which is what we typed in. Okay, one more test. This time we type in water leak detected in this serial monitor input to USB 32. Check our mail, and again, we've received the notification as expected. So this was a very successful and satisfying experiment. Uh, let's take a second to fully appreciate this. Okay, we are able to use a super low-cost microcontroller with built-in Wi-Fi capability to trigger an email notification, which can reach us anywhere in the world, as long as we have an internet connection, about any event the controller wants to, at no cost through the IFTTT service. You can see how powerful this capability can be, and now I'm really inspired. I think I'd like to take the water flow detection project I mentioned to the next level using what we learned here. So imagine we combine that with the ability to send us a notification whenever water flow is detected when it shouldn't be, we would actually have something we could call a complete product. I'll be working on that to the side, and we'll hopefully be able to share something sooner rather than later. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep tinkering.